shit. Week two is here already. What is happening? Oh my god, so much is happening. There was football, it happened. Uh, the podcast. Yeah, yeah, the podcast is happening now. We can go ahead and talk about that brilliant Thursday night game between Cincinnati and Houston. What are your hot takes on that game? God, that it was a waste of everyone's time. I only watched the first half (laughs) and uh, did not see a single memorable moment from it, except for when Deshaun Watson somehow scrambled for like a 50-yard rushing touchdown. (laughs) I was watching. I was like, is that Michael Vick? (laughs) Damn. Yeah, that was kind of nonsense. Um, Yeah, nothing at all relevant for fantasy. Lamar Miller still uh, like middling RB2 until this offense gets better. AJ Green and is Cincinnati. ruined. Jeez. Yeah. Do they have the worst offensive line in football? I, or are they uh, competing with Seattle? I think they're competing <laughs> with Seattle. I think that if you put Andy Dalton behind Seattle's offensive line, he'd be dead already. Um, <laughs> but it's it's really bad. Like that was Dalton's not the guy you want scrambling. He's not going to make plays on his feet like that. Yeah, it's it's concerning if you own anyone on the Cincinnati offense because Dalton's yeah. like 75% corpse right now. <laughs> he's, he's basically dead. It's yeah. only a matter of time. And their backfield is just a shit show. If you drafted Joe Mixon early, you're probably fairly worried at this point. Although he did see the bulk of the carries towards the end of the game, but still not a lot of encouragement from that game. Yeah. Even if he like fully wins the job. So, so what <laughs> he's on a bad offense, <laughs> behind a bad line. You know, best case, then he's Lamar Miller. Like, is that really what you like? You really need like someone like that, like super on your team. Yeah, third round (laughs) draft pick too. Yeah, ugly. But we should probably go ahead and recap week one. Talk about all the shenanigans from the first week of the NFL Mm -hmm. football leagues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Kareem Hunt, the first Thursday night game of the season, he exploded like a diaper. Put up forty plus fantasy points. Made everyone who drafted him cream their pants. And now he is the next superstar of the league. True or false? Uh, I mean, the community would have you believe that. If you look at, like, any, like, rankings or, like, have scrolled through Twitter at all this week, he is seen already as, like, a top five running back. Um, Well, I mean, just look. Let me read you the stat line here. Okay. 17 carries, 148 yards, and a touchdown. Rushing. Receiving. A poultry, 98 <laughs> yards, and two touchdowns. <laughs> he had two receiving touchdowns? Oh, I guess he did, he yeah. Two, he had three touchdowns. I don't know. It, he, I mean, he just, it happened. Hunt happened. All right. Let me uh, let me ruin everyone's day and throw okay. some cold water I was waiting on for that. Yeah. Uh, I watched this game. One of the only people <laughs> who watched this game, I assume. Yeah, probably. Um, going into the fourth quarter, he had, like, roughly 14 carries for 80 yards, something like that, and a touchdown. Like, he was on his way to, like, a pretty good game, something that is fair to expect from the RB1 and, and Andy Reid offense. Uh, and then all the big plays just started, like, falling out of nowhere. The the wheel route that he's, like, wide open on and it goes untackled, to, like, whatever <laughs> that was, 50-yard receiving touchdown. The run where he like gets to the edge and is perfectly blocked and he sprints like 50 yards downfield before getting chased down from behind, which is not something you love. Yeah. That he, that like <laughs> Butler came from the other side of the field and caught him pretty easily. Um, yeah, or else it would have been even he would have put up 50 points. Yeah, if he didn't get tackled. <laughs> yeah, I would have been like. Yes. The the big plays were fun. But nothing that I was like, oh, this is something that he has has in his kit. Like it's not like he's like a speedster or like a crazy power back or like something where like he has this tool he can pull out to break off these big plays. These were just like kind of fluky things. They remind me of the fluky plays we saw from Spencer Ware last year, where he'd like rip off some really big receiving touchdown, and it's like how'd that happen? And then it wouldn't happen again for the rest of the season. Um, so basically, you're saying Hunt is Spencer Ware. I mean, kind of. I think he's a better player than Spencer Ware. Like, I, th- I think he's like a pretty, a pretty good running back, at least based off of one game of film, which is very little. But you know, he doesn't have like, definitely doesn't have elite long speed. We saw him getting chased down pretty easily. Not like super quick. Not very powerful. He just has good vision and is. Uh, he reminds me a little bit of like Arian Foster Light, the way he runs, where he just kind of like glides around. Um, which he's, is he's, a compliment. He's slippery. He's slippery. Yeah. yeah. It's not um, like he's he's super powerful, but then you watch the film and it's like 
he can't be tackled somehow. He's just kind of sliding through the yeah. hole, and you're like, what is happening? How is he not yeah. on the ground right now? Yeah, I definitely think that like getting clearly the bulk of the carries in this offense, he's probably a low end RB one, high end RB two, just like just because that's what happens when you get this role on the Chiefs and you're pretty good. Um, but this like elite top three running back stuff that's getting thrown around, I'm not into it. Not into it at all. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, Alex Smith looked like Aaron Rodgers in that game. <laughs> I think that the whole, the whole game might be a slight anomaly for the Kansas City offense so. because he is the the QB one right now after one week Ooh. is is Alex Smith with his four touchdowns and 368 passing yards. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen that no. frequently that the offense is clicking like that. But like you said, he's still the RB one in an Andy Reid offense, so he is going to see the volume, yeah. and that alone will make him a, a running back one most likely. Probably. I don't think he'll be in like the top half no. of the conversation by the end of the year, but he'll be a solid running back one, which begs the question, what do you do with Kareem Hunt? I mean, it's been one week. Mm-hmm. So do you try to shop him around because his value is at an all-time high? Or do you hold on to your running back one and just ride him out? Well, I think uh, I don't think it hurts to shop him around. I think you have to remember that he was like a, a third or fourth round pick, uh, unless you drafted like really early, and then he might have been like a ninth round pick. Um, and so like a low end RB one for that is like that's pretty good. You know, if we took him in the third round and he's putting up low end RB one numbers, that's basically you're getting him like at value, which is cool. Um, so if you don't like if. The rest, if the rest of your picks are working out, like if you have like Melvin Gordon and maybe you got Zeke somewhere in there, and you know, so yeah, then write it out. But I would probably be shopping him around because I think that he will definitely regress. I mean, obviously, he's going to regress from a forty-point game. Like that's not. Like, you don't think he's putting up fifty this week? <laughs> no, <laughs> against Philly. I don't think that he's you know Lev Bell, who's like consistently putting up twenty points a game. Besides week one. Um, yeah, let's not talk about week talk one about it, for yeah. left out. Um, I just don't think that's like what he is. I think he's going to be like a uh, floats around 100 total yards and maybe he gets a touchdown, which is cool. But, you know, that's you can sell him for more than that right now or at least try to. I think is what yeah, I, I mean, do. make an attempt, it, try to steal an elite running back mm-hmm. like as part of a package, maybe. Maybe go after someone like a Lev Bell, but you obviously have to include more in the package than Kareem Hunt. Here's a package I I tweeted out about Kareem Hunt. Um, Kareem Hunt and Stephon Diggs for Lev Bell. Yeah, that would probably get it done. I think it would because these like the forty points from Hunt, the twenty five or whatever it is from Diggs. Bell, like that situation didn't look good week one. Like maybe, maybe the person I wouldn't take it as I only left Bell in like three leagues, and like I wouldn't do it, but someone might. Yeah, and I mean Diggs was what fifth, sixth round draft pick. So if yeah. you can turn those two picks into what should have been the number one overall selection mm-hmm. after one week, yeah, then you're doing very, very well. Especially considering that, you know, Lev Bell is going to positively regress and Kareem Hunt's going to go the other way, obviously. So do it in a heartbeat. Now let's look at the other. uh, We don't want to make the whole thing about Kareem Hunt. No, I'm I'm sure the listeners, they're drooling over Kareem Hunt as well. But (laughs) if you look at the top three running backs from week one, they're all rookies. You have the Fournette show in Jacksonville who just like clomper stomped Houston. That was an mm-hmm. ugly game. And then you have uh, Tay Tarek, is what we call it here in uh, K- Singapore. K- Tay Tarek. <laughs> Tay Tarek, Tarek K- Cohen, Tarek. Uh, is the RB3, who also had one of those massive games mm-hmm. and then was probably the most popular waiver wire pickup this week. I'm sure. <laughs> so what do you make of uh, these guys? Do you think Fournette's a real deal? Uh, probably. I mean, I've... Yeah. He had what 100, 124 yeah, total 100. yards. Doesn't get a t- a he does get a touchdown. Um, yeah, I think the touchdowns probably aren't super reliable in this offense, especially now that Allen Robinson is gone. So this offense is just going to be worse. Uh, but I think that the rushing is legit. I think that he is like a legit, like elite running back talent. Um, so and because he's on the Jags, I don't think even though he did have like the second highest score this week, I don't think you could sell him that way. I think people would be like, ah. Oh, the Jags, I don't care, and you'd be selling him at what he really is, which is like a low-end RB1, high-end RB2 probably. 
Um, yeah, we, we do have to mention that TJ Eldon was not playing in this game. Yeah. And the, the game script really uh, positively impacted his performance. He had 26 carries, but they were ahead the vast majority of the game, and they were yeah. just trying to run out the clock, essentially. But if you're looking at Jacksonville, you're probably thinking, okay, they're maybe improving as a team. Mm-hmm. They should be improving by now, but by no means are they an elite NFL squad. No. So I don't think they're going to be in these situations consistently where they are up by multiple scores and they're just grinding down the clock. Uh, in reality, they have Blake Bortles as their quarterback. Uh, they have... Yeah a depleted wide receiving core. And if they find themselves trailing in a lot of these games, I think you're going to see more TJ Yeldon than you might Mm -hmm. want to when he comes back and is healthy because he is, I guess, the the third down back there. We saw a lot of Chris Ivory in this game too, Uh, which goes to show that they were really just pounding the rock. That's basically all they were doing. Blake Bortles was basically non-existent which is probably ideal for their that's what team they want to do if they can that's what they want <laughs> yeah. and and they do have a surprisingly good offensive line so and their defense uh, I think, is actually like pretty good i think yeah well it should be how many draft picks high <laughs> draft picks they've been investing into... in it like crazy <laughs> so fournette i think he's gonna be probably an rb2 yeah, that's probably fair. When all is said and done, maybe a high high end RB two. Yeah, but he's not the RB two, which is where he stands right now. <laughs> right, exactly. And and, and then yeah. we have the flash in the pan, Cohen uh, on yes. Chicago. So what did you did you watch any of that game? Uh, I saw a good amount of it. I was kind of flipping back and forth between that and the the Oakland game mostly. Um, the Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders I had to see some vintage <laughs> Marshawn Lynch looking. Looking Jeez. just like Marshawn Lynch. It was yeah. pretty cool. Oh, we'll get to Marshawn in a bit because <laughs> we'll he was that. running some fools over. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Cohen. I watched a good amount of that game. Uh, he is definitely like a really fun player, and he has like, like elite quickness and speed, and he's basically like Darren Sproles in his youth. Maybe Darren Sproles in his prime. It's one game, so we don't know that for sure. But it looked like that was like a very plausible thing in his like range of outcomes. Um, but if you want to look at what Darren Sproles did in his career, his best season was – like 1,300 total yards, and I think he had nine total touchdowns, and he was like a high-end RB2 in standard, which is awesome, but that was on the Saints with Drew Brees, who had Jimmy Graham and Marcus Colston on, on this like elite offense. Cohen well, hold on, hold on here. Chicago has <laughs> Mike Glennon. And? They have Kevin White. Oh, never nope. mind. Hold on. Nope. He's injured again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is just the, the same song, different verse for Kevin uh, White. Oh, uh, they have Jojo How How. Jojo How How, who is who is apparently already losing his job. Uh, maybe Jordan Andy's Howard is like a sneaky buy low. Um, I don't know if I would do it, but maybe maybe the Jordan Howard owner is just like full tilt right now after week one. <laughs> I mean, Jordan Howard still had a respectable game too. I think he was just outshined by yeah, Cohen. I mean, he still had a touchdown, of four yards a carry, so he was right around where he should have been. But he. Yeah had that egregious drop, which would have won them the game, too, and would have put him into the top half of the RB1 conversation for week one if he would have caught that touchdown yeah. pass. That's the last time uh, they throw a pass to Jordan Howard. Like, Jordan Howard, yeah. You can't do this. That, that was a conversation in the preseason, too, that they were trying to work on his receiving skills and that they thought he had made strides, and then he comes out in week one and just drops the game. Yeah. Game was in his hands, <laughs> in and, his hands he and he dropped. Literally dropped it. Uh, yeah. So with Cohen, uh, I th- I think that best case he's an RB in PPR. He's probably an RB two just because he's going to catch a lot of passes. Because who else are they going to throw it to? Josh Bellamy. Um, that's literally <laughs> the only receiving name I know on that team. Who else? Oh, Kendall, Kendall Wright. Wright. Kendall Wright is there. Kendall Wright and Josh yeah. Bellamy, the elite receiving duo of the Chicago Bears. Uh, <laughs> so Cohen will probably see a ton of targets, which in PPR is great. In standard, like his ceiling is it has to be rb2 because he's 180 pounds five foot six he's he's tiny he can't he can't get more than a few actual carries a game or he'll break but he can sneak through those tiny holes <laughs> to slide right through them <laughs> to slide right through them. i mean if they start giving him real carries then i want to sell him even faster because he's gonna die any second like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll last a couple of weeks yeah um, um 
Yeah, so his ceiling just is kind of capped by his size. You know, he'll probably have some huge weeks like this again. He'll have other weeks where he doesn't get a touchdown and he has like 40 receiving yards. And you remember that he, that's what Darren Sproles was. Um, so yeah, I'd be, hard to I'd start be with confidence, to really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ideally you would be shopping him, selling him at his highest point. But you, again, this is week one. Mm -hmm. We'll kind of reiterate that fact throughout this show that a lot of people are at least generally speaking most people aren't looking to to sell their team after one week mm -hmm. so trading after one week becomes a little bit difficult unless you have kareem hunt who had 40 points and you can probably <laughs> yeah. you probably unload him if you're really looking to sell yeah and I, I i would say in general i don't usually try to trade after one week i usually like to sit for a few weeks really see how things pan out because you can think you have this really clever take on a sell high and a buy low and then you realize that your off-season impressions were just completely wrong uh, like yeah. last year, I after one week, I sold DeMarco Murray and bought Todd Gurley, and it was a one-for-one, one, and I thought I was a genius. Uh, and clearly, I wasn't. Clearly, that was a terrible <laughs> trade for me. And that's the risk of these post-week one trades. We, don't, we still don't really know. Um, but with the Cohen one, I feel really confident that he's not going to be a three-down back. He just isn't built for it. Um, so if you can sell him like he's an RB1, if people are excited enough on the, the hype train, then, then do it. Oh no! I think best case scenario is like a a split backfield there. Yeah. Like he'll be used as a change of pace and maybe line up as a receiver. Mm -hmm. Maybe Duke Johnson in a little bit. <laughs> he's definitely valuable in PPR, but yeah. yeah, Jordan Howard's still the guy there. So he's an interesting name to to watch mm -hmm. as the season progresses because if a fantasy owner continually sees that Cohen is putting up these numbers, they might freak out a little bit if they're a Jordan Howard owner and they're not getting that RB1 production. Mm -hmm. Even though he was fringe RB1 still, even yeah. with Cohen blowing up. Uh, any other notable things to talk about? Uh, we saw quite a few dud performances. David Johnson is hurt. We should probably mention that. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm conflicted on that, because I am on the record having said that I thought David Johnson was going to be a bust this season. A bust, yeah. Um, I seen it. Yeah, I wrote like an article on it back in February. I had my whole take of like the offense is going to be terrible. And even though he's an elite talent, like it's going to be Todd Gurley again. And it was looking like that for the first like half of that game, like three quarters of that game. Like he, he couldn't get anything going on the ground. He was still getting the receiving, but it wasn't worth much. Um, and it was it looked like it was heading that way. And then he gets hurt and is out now two to three months. And, you know, we don't really know, but he is bust, just not for the reasons that I was hoping for. Yeah, exactly. And then now the zero RB community is going to be beating their chest. Like, this is why you don't draft a running back early. <laughs> look at what Lev Bell did in week one. Look at what happened to David Johnson. And look what Tara Cohen did. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I do want to touch on um, Mike Gillisley. Uh, just like ah, really, Gillisley. Just there real quick. Go. I mean, I, it's well, he had three touchdowns and 45 total rushing yards. Um that is like the make of a like Legarrette Blunt roller coaster ride of like when he gets the touchdowns <laughs> he's great but when he doesn't he's not getting much yardage and he's ruining you. Um, so I would I I'd be shopping him around more aggressively than any of the others, especially knowing the Patriots. Like it's it was Gillisley last week, but it might be James White next you know this week or actually probably will be James White because it's the Saints and it's going to be a shootout. I would think it's probably going to be a James White week actually. Um, yeah. So Gillisley, of like the cells, like Hunt's like, ah, eh, shop him around, see Cohen, kind of the same, you know. Um, Gillisley, it's like I'd probably be trying to get rid of him right now just because I, I, don't, I don't really want to start Gillisley every week. I don't own him, but if I did, I wouldn't like that. Yeah, no, definitely not. That's, I mean, that's kind of been the age-old adage with the New England running backs. You never really know how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. So Gillisley, you can definitely try to shop around those three touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, but is you can't really start him with confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wasn't terribly efficient outside of the three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. uh, the running game didn't look fantastic as a whole. So, uh, who knows what's going to happen in New England? From they're supposed to be sixteen and zero, right? Wasn't that the talk? <laughs> it's, it's still possible. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't, don't do the math. Don't crunch yeah. the numbers. It can happen. End of the year, they're going to go back and change the score. They're going to reverse. <laughs> Kansas City was cheating. Kareem hunts on PEDs. They got to change the score. I'm, I'm sure he'll find a way. Yeah, what about Dalvin Cook? Let's talk about rookie running backs. Oh, yeah. Dal he Dalvin he Cook. had a great game. 
he had a great game. Um, I watched that one. I watched like all that game because I was like, I own Diggs in four of the five leagues I'm in. So I was like, Diggs has to be good. And then he was. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, but yeah, so I saw like all of Cook's work, and it's really encouraging that he is clearly the lead guy there. Like it's the the preseason yeah. injury to Latavius Murray just completely removed him from the rotation. So that's cool. Latavius, <laughs> it is one carry and fumbled. Yeah, that's that's it. that was the like... real nail in the coffin. It's like, well, maybe yeah. if Latavius comes in and he's good and it turns into a split and then fumbled it. It's like, oh, never mind. You're gone. You're done. Latavius <laughs> is gone. He's probably, he's probably going to get cut. Um, yeah, I thought Cook looked looked pretty good. He's, you know, really good acceleration, good power, but not like a, like a crazy like quick cutter. But um, I think most of his production was kind of he was playing the Saints. And, you know, the, I think the Saints defense is terrible. Um, so I worry how good that Vikings line really is, how good that offense really is. Does he turn into a middling RB2? Um, which I think is probably the most likely. But, you know, I you probably can't sell him. I don't even know if I'd really recommend it because he looks like he has all the volume. So when, like, he didn't yeah. put up, like, crazy big numbers, I think you just, just hold on to him and enjoy him at least as, like, an RB2. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have the touchdown, but he had the the volume for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, how about the uh, Carolina backfield? This was a popular conversation oh, right. during the preseason. You have your Christian McCaffrey's, you have your Jonathan Stewart's, the old and the young. The Jonathan old, Stewart yeah. was like a ninth round draft pick, but he outshined CMC. He did. Run CMC. <laughs> Run C- God, what a terrible <laughs> nickname. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminds me of when Darren McFadden's nickname was Run DMC. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dead. and now he's just dead. And now he's run yeah. dead MC. Ooh, run Ooh. healthy scratch MC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, just to continue pounding home the, the running backs that are dead. That's going to be the uh, <laughs> our players that are dead. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, th- I mean, Jonathan Stewart was, you know, the like pretty like the early down lead back for the most part, 18 carries. Um, Jay Stu. Gets a, gets a receiving touchdown, but yeah, I saw that was kind of more of like a fluky, yeah. broken play than anything designed. Um, yeah, exactly. But still, that has to chop the ass of the uh, McCaffrey right. owners. And that Jonathan Stewart mine. gets a receiving touchdown. Yeah, You're like this isn't supposed to happen. Uh, He's old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this looks like it's probably a split backfield, but Stewart's the one you want because he's the one most likely to get the goal line work. Um, yeah, if I'm a McCaffrey owner. And it's non PPR. Uh, I'm like really worried because I I don't see he's he's also like a small dude. I don't I never really bought the McCaffrey's gonna overtake Stewart as a three down back narrative because he's not built for that. Yeah. So if we're talking about the four rookie running backs, mm-hmm. Fournette, Cook, McCaffrey, and Mixon, how are you uh, rating them one to four? With Mixon as well. With Mixon, with Mixon. yeah, he's probably four. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wasn't there five? It was McCaffrey, Mixon, Hunt, Fournette, and Cook. Oh, Hunt. Yeah, I guess we Hunt. can throw Hunt in there. Um, all right. From the bottom. <laughs> from the, yeah, from the bottom. From the bottom, I'd probably go Mixon, honestly, because uh, that offense is truly terrible, and it's three running backs. Like, it's he needs so yeah, much they... to become the lead guy, and then what's that even worth at that point? Yeah, I mean, they're still trying to get Jeremy Hill involved, too. He's still happening. <laughs> yeah that's ugh, I, don't, I don't know how jeremy hill is like getting the start in any kind of volume when he's just like not good uh yeah mix so in five mccaffrey four um McCaffrey four all right that's also a split and i don't yeah i don't buy it uh three i'll probably go cook cook um probably cook and then hunt because i just think that offense will be a little bit better than the vikings um, when it's like basically the similar role between him and Cook, and then Fournette won, even if it's like not a good offense, he's just the talent I believe in the most. And like those three are all getting about the same volume, um, yep. And like all kind of like conservative offenses. So I'll take the guy that I think is just the best of the three. Yeah, Fournette has. Uh, I mean, he has Zeke Elliott talent. Yeah. If you watch his tape, he's incredibly talented, and he trucks people a la Marshawn Lynch. He's got the <laughs> The vision. So he he's something special. We'll just see if he can put it all together in Jacksonville. I mean, he he's not walking into the situation that Zeke did last year. Yeah. I mean, that was optimal. Situation. So, 
Yeah, I would agree. I would say that a lot of people would assume that Hunt would automatically be number one because of his big game and he's in an Andy Reid offense, but I think Fournette is a better player. I think uh, Kansas City, their offense is not that good. And the definitely regression is going to happen. I mean, actually, the first few series of the game, Kansas City looked god-awful. I was sitting there gleefully clapping like, oh, they're bad. They're so bad. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, the, the second half happened, and I was like, well, <laughs> shit. Okay. Yeah. But, I, I really think that's just the um, Patriots defense being terrible. Like, it'll be hard to see next week's is against the Saints, so. The Saints blowing up anyone isn't surprising, but then they get Houston in Week Three, and I'm just like waiting Houston for like puts Desha- up points on them. <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for Deshaun Watson to have like a good game against them. It's like, oh wait, wait a second, something's maybe, wrong. Here. Maybe New England's just bad. Yeah, yeah, their defense at least. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to talk about Week One, or should we jump into Week Two here? Since we are in Week Two, technically, um, Week Two has begun. I guess like touchly, quickly touch on, not touchly, quick on, quickly touch on. Um, Kenny Galladay, what do you think about about him, about what happened, about his his future in the NFL? You, you want to sing his uh his song? <laughs> oh, the Hotel Motel Galladay in uh, Hotel Motel Galladay in. Uh, he's a wide receiver three right now. Yeah, <laughs> because That's of his uh, four catches. Yeah, I mean, he had seven targets, two TDs. Yeah. He had a great game. I mean, he is supposedly, you know, Calvin Johnson light, right? <laughs> Baby Tron is the nickname. Baby that Tron, around, which uh, I don't think he would enjoy because it's not like the most, the most flattering <laughs> nickname being referred to as a baby and a shade of Calvin Johnson. I don't think he'd enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, I think Galladay kind of fits into the same mold as like a uh, Tara Cohen that uh, you might <laughs> yeah. try to be looking to unload him because. Uh, well, I will say this before I get too much into Galladay. What he does is he opens up, he activates Golden Tate mm-hmm. a little bit more. Yeah. Golden Tate is now finally in a spot where he's comfortable. Last year he was kind of getting moved around a lot. But this year he seems to be playing in his natural position and he's thriving. He had a, he had a big game as well in terms yeah. of targets and, and overall production. But you have Golden Tate, you have... Marvin Jones, I guess, kind of. You, I mean, there is... I mean, I won't say there are a lot of mouths to be fed in the Detroit <laughs> offense, but right. I don't think he's going to shoot to the top of the depth chart in terms of the wide receiving core there. Mm-hmm. It's encouraging, for sure, and he has the talent. I mean, he was kind of the preseason lover boy of a lot of the, the metrics guys. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was rising in terms of the draft board late, right before a lot of fantasy players drafted most likely and then he comes out in week one and uh backs that up with two touchdowns so it's encouraging but i mean again i don't know about detroit i don't really have a ton of confidence in their offense i mean matthew stafford is good i think he'll be slinging the rock around a little bit but he's prone to making some bonehead plays and then you have Golden Tate, who I think is going to be the focal point of the offense. So I think best case scenario would be like wide receiver three, mm. somewhere in that range for Galladay. Galladay in. The Galladay but in. you can maximize his value at this point. I don't know if anyone's going to be buying it as a thing. So you might be better off just to sit tight yeah, in this I case. I, I mean, I agree with like the general assessment. I don't think that like he is uh, going to become this like elite wide receiver one or like a reliable wide receiver two while Marvin Jones is also there. So he's probably going to be really up and down, just big play dependent. Um, so he's like, I bet his end of season numbers look like a like low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three, but like week to week, he's going to be all over the place. Yeah, yeah, boom or boss, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's definitely like the, the sit, See, you know, he they get the Giants this week, which is a good secondary, but he'll he's not going to be seeing Jenkins. He's going to be seeing some like lesser corner, so maybe he has another big play. Then Atlanta, he's not going to be seeing True Font. You know, so maybe after a few weeks of like getting the softer coverage, you can then sell him. Maybe. Oh, that would be ideal. Yeah, that's. I mean, you mentioned earlier that you don't really trade for the first couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's much more convincing if you're putting together 
two or three weeks of production. Yeah. That's when you look to capitalize, when you're breaking down schedules, if they had soft matchups or their schedule moving forward. So you can look at players like maybe a Carlos Hyde, mm -hmm. if he's still struggling because he has Seattle this week to, to really try to buy low. So I, I like yeah. that. You, you hold on to some of these players. I mean, with Kareem Hunt, it's such an unusual game, the fact that he put up 40-plus points. Mm -hmm. And he kind of has this, this situation to back it up. So that would really be the only circumstance where I'd be trying to sell a player yeah. after one week of production. But Galladay, you kind of want to let him build his resume a little bit. And then you might actually be able to package him for somebody attractive. Because at this point, if you're trying to trade Kenny Galladay, you're probably not going to get anyone yeah. that star-studded. I mean, I don't think a lot of people are going to say, oh, you know, Galladay one for one for another wide receiver one. Uh, that's not going to happen <laughs> unless not. you're you're playing in a league with tacos. But <laughs> yeah, 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 hold on to Galladay. What about Tyreek Hill? We didn't really touch on the wide receivers. We focus more on the running right. backs. But yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Tyreek Hill. Um, as I said, I watched this game, so I saw Tyreek Hill. Uh, I mean, don't throw up the deuces. I. <laughs> exactly the deuces yeah that that gif that's now gone all around the world um i was not as uh like pumped on his line watching the game because he had the one long touchdown on a just completely broken blown coverage again the patriots defense might be awful um but other than that he still looked like he's been using as like a gadget player to me like the the thing i wanted to see with tyree kill to believe that he could be like a wide receiver one in this offense and be like a fantasy like high end wide receiver two, maybe wide receiver one, is that he could get open at all levels of the field and that he's used that way. Like not just deep and not just these weird like gadgety sweeps, but also like actual short routes in the middle of the field and like do all of it. And I didn't see any of that. I saw just the short stuff, like the weird sweeps and then the the run straight as fast as you can. Was kind of what yeah, yeah. what like what his game was. And that's what it was last season too, which is what's gonna make him really inconsistent and up and down. Uh, so I'm still kind of worried, but it's also one week, you know, I don't, I'm not saying sell him, I mean, you know, sit tight. Uh, yeah. Philly doesn't really have like an amazing secondary. So maybe, you know, he can do it again, or you can see, see more. Maybe this week he shows a more complete route tree and he's, you know, it's more like heartening, but I'm like kind of worried right now. Well, his one big play too, that was just blown by yeah. the new England defense. You, you won't see that happen again where yeah. the safety up top basically completely ignores Tyree Kill as he's streaking down the sideline. <laughs> yeah. Like he beat his guy at the line of scrimmage and then nobody was there. <laughs> right. I, I don't think you'll ever see a wide receiver get more wide open than that. And then that's why he had the time to just run down the sideline, throw up his deuces, and he gets his long touchdown play. What was that? Like is he five consecutive games he's had a fifty plus yard touchdown? No? Uh, yeah, that the sounds NFL right. NFL record, I think. Yeah, yeah. which means it's going to stop any second. <laughs> There's no way it's going. You, you don't think he's going to do it this, this whole season? 16 games? Uh, I'll say probably <laughs> not. <laughs> probably not. But, yeah. So Tyreek Hill was a wide receiver, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know who the wide receiver one was? Stephon in week one? Diggity. <laughs> oh, there it is. dang. Stephon Diggs. Uh, I boy. Mean, he looked amazing. Uh, I know that, you know, the, the Saints defense isn't good, but it was not like, well, okay, one of the touchdowns he was wide open. That one of them was like a completely yeah. broken, very move, whatever, like 30 yards and a touchdown. Um, and he still looks like really good. He was still, like lots of these like contested, like crazy catches where like he's getting, um, that second touchdown, he just snatched out of the air in the end zone of the air. And he had that one deep pass where he was getting interfered with and got the flag, but still caught the ball. Um, yeah, I think he is actually like a really like special talent. It's you know, it's can this offense keep being this good? So I'm a little worried about that. Um, Sammy Bradford. Sammy Bagel <laughs> bites, yeah. Sammy Bagel bites. I mean, he looked <laughs> solid in that game, but like you said, you know, it's one week at home against New Orleans. Uh, we'll see if he's able to spread the ball around like that because he was just dishing it out. I mean, he had Diggs going, he had Thielen going. Dalvin Cook was motoring. I mean, their whole offense was just yeah. I mean, I mean it's firing on all cylinders. When Phelan gets 150 receiving yards, that's when you're like, okay, this might be like a weird. We're playing the Saints fluke because I, I don't think that's going to be regular at all. Um, yeah, like Bradford looked really good, but it's also he 
basically had no pressure on him because the Saints apparently can't rush the passer at all. So he had <laughs> all day to like stand around, look at what he was doing, and like pick someone else. Just open had a nice little hot pocket. Yeah, which like okay, that's cool. He can play well that way, but like almost every quarterback in the NFL can do that. Like a good quarterback isn't they play well in a good situation; is that they still play well in a bad situation. Um, which yeah, which Bradford we, we clearly saw really that. Do. Yeah. Dalton can't do that either. <laughs> Dalton can't do that. Um, we've seen like, in Bradford's few, yeah. pass. He can't do that. So I think this will be a good week because the the Steelers do blitz a lot. So it'll be good to see what his uh, what it's like when he actually has pressure in his face. If he can keep playing well, if we see the more vintage Bradford we're used to. Yeah. Speaking of the Steelers, I mean Antonio Brown's still elite. Mm, yeah. Eleven That's targets, one hundred eighty-two yards. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Thank God for Antonio Brown, because Lev Bell certainly didn't do anything in that game. So. <laughs> yeah, yikes. Yeah, definite yikes. Jordy Nelson looked solid. Yep, he he looked better than, than he did last year. Like, maybe yeah. like he's finally got himself back up to full speed again. Like, it looked pretty vintage, actually. Amari Cooper, I'll tell you this. For those who were concerned about... I mean, the knock on Amari Cooper is that he never gets red zone opportunities. Mm-hmm. Well, he had <laughs> he got four targets yeah. in the red zone and three in zone targets yeah uh which is basically equivalent to what he had all of last year so obviously they're trying to game plan for amari cooper so if you spent maybe probably a second round draft pick i think that's where he went that was his mm-hmm. adp uh that's very encouraging yeah. uh, he did have a couple of dropsies which was the knock on him in his rookie year and then apparently he cleaned it up last year and then all of a sudden they're week back. one they're back but his touchdown was just pure force of will yeah he kind of just bounced off a couple players and fought his way into the end zone but if he's getting the targets in the red zone then he's going to be a wide receiver one Mm -hmm. yeah so i mean the wide receivers kind of outside of julio uh, odell obviously didn't play but a lot of the big name wide receivers stepped up to the plate Mm -hmm. in week one uh kind of the opposite of what we saw with the running back so clearly that means that zero running back is winning right for sure. I mean, I'm not going to do the like keeping track thing this season because um, I just don't want to. But <laughs> I think we're going to see it see it swing back the other way for sure. I mean, I I mean, we can talk about, you know, David Johnson is hurt. Lebel had a rough start, but Zeke didn't have a rough start. Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon. didn't have a rough start. Um, so there are some like people drafted as RB ones that are performing that way. Um, yeah, like Sean McCoy. Sean McCoy, yeah, that's like the Sean McCoy, Zeke, and Melvin Gordon all look like pretty safe. Like if you got one of them in the first round, or I mean Zeke, he went in, like the second or third round, uh, then you like feel pretty happy about that. And I think yeah, we haven't even seen too. Ajahi yet. Ajahi is kind of like the one wild card of like, which is does he go the way of like Jordan Howard, Demarco Murray, where you're like kind of worried, or does he you know go the way of like a Melvin Gordon and you're like, all right, here we go. Yeah. I mean, Melvin Gordon was saved by his his touchdown, his receiving touchdown. Because yeah, at the end of the day, see his it, it was a leak, <laughs> <laughs> untouched. Just why? Well, he at the end, but he was pretty wide open. Yeah, I mean, but it, but his yards per carry, three yards per carry. Eh, we'll I mean, see yeah, what happens. That's not ideal, but uh, you know, it's, it's a... I'm I'm only I'm only dogging him because I know you own him. So, <laughs> I mean, he's he's never been an elite yards per carry guy, but it's the the touchdown maker in a good offense that. I'm most interested in because you know it was Denver this week, so the Charters aren't going to look good there. But outside of that, I think they're going to be a, a Miami offense. this week. That that'll be uh, Keenan offense. Allen. He made it through Week One without getting hurt. That's encouraging. <laughs> it's better than last year, so he's already <laughs> yeah a slight improvement already, already on track. Yeah, I mean he looks like himself, which is cool if he can stay healthy. Targets and then, targets. Yeah, and that's a target hog, which is mm, what you want. Juicy. Juicy. <laughs> Juicy indeed. Let's let's jump into week two here. All right. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, yeah. So out of the guys that we talked about, mm-hmm. the hot waiver wire ads, if we're looking at the hot waiver wire ads this week, obviously you have your Tatarek, you have uh, your <laughs> Buck Allen, who we haven't even talked about, somehow got 21 carries in uh, week <laughs> one. That was game script, though. Yeah, that was game Don't script. Don't get too excited about that. But now Woodhead's out for at least eight weeks, so... They're probably going to game plan for Buck Allen a little bit more. I don't mm-hmm. think Langford, even though they brought Langford up from the practice squad, I don't really think he's going to play into anything. So no, That's just insurance. So Buck Allen is the Danny Woodhead of Baltimore offense. So you have Tay Tarek, you have Buck Allen. 
are any of these guys worth plugging into your lineup as like a flex? Uh, no, is my opinion. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> I mean, don't. Yeah, to me, they're all wait and sees. Uh, I think Buck Allen does have a good chance of like mostly taking that job from Terrence West because I think that he's a better player. But I don't want to use him the first week after the Woodhead injury, and especially against a I think the Cleveland run defense might actually be pretty good. Watching how little space Lev had to run last week. Um, yeah, the line was looking yeah, solid. I think it's actually a pretty good defensive line. Uh, so I don't really want to send Buck Allen into that. Um, and say, you know, same with I, all of these guys should really be wait and sees like Tarek, Tay Tarek, whatever you call him. Ta -ta Tarek. <laughs> I don't no, no one's going to get that. That's a Singapore thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, I, I need to see that. I don't know. It's also against Tampa Bay, who we haven't seen at all this, this year. So we have no idea what that defense is like. That defense might be pretty That's good. True, yeah. And then all of a sudden you wasted a flex on Cohen. Um, yeah, they're all like stashes to me, just to see. Like Kerwin is the one that has the best matchup with Indy, um, but I like I'm so worried about the Cardinals' offense. I don't really know if I want anything to do with its running game. Yeah, I mean they brought back Chris Johnson, mm -hmm. Andre Ellington still in the mix, so who knows what's going to happen? I, apparently, he's a starter. That's what Arian said that Kerwin's going to be the guy, the early down guy. But mm -hmm. I mean that might last one series. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Starter a yeah. game, and then suddenly he's gone. And, and then it's, you know, Red Jesus and Ellington. <laughs> <laughs> Red Jesus, exactly. Man, if Ellington became a thing finally, like three years late, oh my that God. would be incredible. That would be amazing. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, it's week two, so... What are your thoughts on like any sort of oddball sneaky start? Or do you just are you firmly in the camp of just start your studs no matter what the matchup is? I'm mostly in the camp of like stick with the chalk, like draft start the guys you drafted, like give them another week. Uh the one we talked about is like a good sneaky start. He's more of a fringe guy, is Tevin Coleman. Um yeah. because he was taken in the range where he's not like one of your starters, but you could he's like in that flex range is where you yeah. drafted him. Uh, and it's it's Falcons Packers, which should just be in, in it's in Atlanta, so it should just be like a crazy shootout. Yeah, and we saw Coleman get involved in the offense. I mean, mm -hmm. he was he was right there along Freeman in terms of usage yeah. for a majority of the game. So he was seeing pass work. He was he was actually seeing a lot of usage in the running game as well. So I mean, all Coleman really needs to do. To be worthy of a flex play is, I mean, six to eight, ten points somewhere. And that's if he doesn't fall into the end zone. Mm -hmm. I think that's easily achievable. And then if he gets into the end zone, it's, I mean, you're looking pretty. And there's a great chance that that happens in that game because it should be, like you said, a shootout in the dome, mm -hmm. Atlanta, Green Bay. But outside of that, start the guys that you drafted. It's week two. Yeah. How about... A guy like Carlos Hyde against Seattle. Oh, man. Is that worrisome? Yeah, that's really worrisome. Um, I think that, that run defense looks better than it did last year. I mean, they have Sheldon Richardson now, um, and it, it looks elite in the first, like, three quarters of the Green Bay game. It's just that defense got worn out because they were on the field, like, almost that entire game. Um, and that's when, like, Ty Montgomery started actually, like, getting some running room. Um so yeah, I'd I'd be worried about because I think I think that Green Bay line might actually be pretty good too. Um, so I'd be worried about Hyde behind a more suspect line in Seattle against a, an elite looking run defense. Uh, if there's a way you cannot start him, I'd like yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, game script as well. Mm -hmm. It's not the best matchup there. Yeah. Outside of that, is there anyone else you're looking to maybe not start this week? What about T.Y. Hilton? Oh, man, Hilton's a great one to, like, try to figure out because it's um, against Indy, a Vontae Davis-less Indy, as far as we, like, know at this point. Um, or against uh, Arizona. Oh, uh, do I have it backwards? Um, yeah. <laughs> against Arizona <laughs> um, to be against Patrick Peterson. So you don't like the matchup. 
and it's with some combination of Jacoby <laughs> yeah. Brissett and Scott Tolzien. Who knows? They're both going to start. <laughs> we'll just see what happens. It's, I mean, basically, you're hoping for a long touchdown if you start Hilton at this yeah. point. Purely and if you have no like other that. options, that's, I mean, I have Hilton on a couple of my teams, actually, and I'm probably going to bench him at least in one of the leagues. But I'm undecided. I mean, the allure. See, he's one of those players that gives you that allure that mm -hmm. it really only takes one play to make his week. If he catches a 60-yard touchdown pass, you're set out of your wide receiver two right. slot. So it's just that we haven't really seen the Indianapolis offense. I mean, they look terrible against the Rams. Yeah, uh, They obviously don't have Andrew Luck. The running game is... I don't know. It's a big fat question mark. So it might be worth just keeping him in to see how he performs this week. All right, let's play a little but, start sit then with T.Y. Okay. I'm going to name some names here. Uh, T.Y. Uh, Hilton or Sammy Watkins against Josh Norman and the Redskins. Man, I think I'm going Watkins. Okay, I, I would agree. Uh, T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, Watkins looked pretty solid, actually. Yeah, actually did look, I think Jared Goff looked, looked like a passable quarterback, so you don't really know if that's uh, the Colts effect or if he has <laughs> turned the corner there a little bit. For now, I'll say the Colts effect, but we'll see yeah. uh, We'll see up with him. All right, T.Y. Hilton or Devontae Parker in his debut against the Chargers. Ooh, man. I think I would start Parker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, I think I'll start Parker would too. too. I mean, just from what we saw from Cutler and Parker, the report, it seems like he's going to be targeted a lot, probably in the end zone as well. Yeah. So I think the opportunity for consistency is there with Parker, whereas Hilton, you might be banking on that one play. All right. I'm with you on there. Uh, we're going to do two more. Okay. Here's one. T.Y. Hilton or same game, John Brown against Avante oh. Davis list Colts. I think I'm going T.Y. in that case. Okay. That's I like John Brown, but he's thing. already dinged up. He, he was yeah. a, did not practice today. And like you said, I mean, Carson Palmer, my God. Even though Indianapolis has a, I guess, suspect defense, Vontae davis list, But, I mean, I mean, Palmer was just degaffing left and right. So He, he looked cooked. <laughs> There's so many <laughs> gifts of him. Just like trying to throw like a ten yard out, and he doesn't have the arm strength to get it to the guy. It just like falls a couple yards short of him, and it's like, what? Are you are you that yeah, done? Are we looking at Peyton in his final season right now? It's, it's it was ugly. I mean, I like that Brown got targeted eight times, but nice. I mean, he had four catches for thirty two yards. <laughs> right. If if Palmer can't push the ball down the field, then he becomes kind of useless yeah. at that point. True, true. So All I'll right. go Hilton in that one. Last one. T.Y. Hilton or Corey Davis on the Tennessee Titans? Ooh. Ooh, okay. Pretend you actually have to make this decision in an Apex League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is terrible. Sophie's Chosho. I'm really glad we don't have to make this decision. <laughs> I know, this would be a terrible decision if we actually had to make this. I think, you, I mean, if you're looking at, like, filming the wide receiver three, spot mm -hmm. on your team i yeah. think you go with somebody like ty hilton okay because he has that big play opportunity and i mean theoretically i think it's going to be kind of one of these games where the colts might find themselves behind even though you're talking about arizona here mm -hmm. i think arizona might actually jump out to a lead um if it's kind of a coin flip to be honest but I think you go for the the risk mm. in that circumstance mm -hmm. because you're obviously not looking at the, your wide receiver one if you're talking about Corey Davis versus T. Y. Hilton. So, <laughs> yeah. hopefully you you have somebody that you're counting on for stability, and then you throw in a T. Y. Hilton who could break the week wide open for you. Yeah, uh, I'm probably with you. I think we found the line of like you're starting Watkins and Parker, but probably not Brown or Davis. Like that's kind of kind of the area of like a wide receiver three or flex and it's just like how much upside do you really need yeah which is unfortunate because you probably drafted him to be 
somebody uh, a lot higher than that. Although we're waiting for Andrew Luck to come back. Yeah, he's more of a stash than anything else. I mean, you just really have to hope that you took Julio Jones and Des Bryant and T.Y. Hilton as your wide receiver three. And then or you got Stephon Diggs, Diggs later, yeah. So and he's Corey your Davis. wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, any other notes for week two? Uh, I don't think so. I think we can probably wrap this up as we approach 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's wrap her up. Uh, we we'll probably have a lot more to say next week because yeah. we'll have more than one game to go off of. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an exercise to not overreact from one week. So let's not go too deep into any analysis other than the big sweeping stuff we're doing right now. All right. So any words, last words, final words? My last words. For the peeps? Um, Yeah, I own Tyler Eifert in two leagues, and I'm tilted. I don't know what to do about it. Probably drop him. (laughs) (laughs) He did a couple of nice catches, but, I mean, the Cincinnati offense is a dumpster fire, so. Yeah, probably drop him. Yeah, I think I'm thinking about dropping A.J. Green, and I drafted him in the first round. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, All right, well, on that note, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Tyler Eifert has turned into Tyler Eifart, and there it's it is. official. It's done. <laughs> Tyler Eifert, heard it Tyler first. Eifart. We found our, our <laughs> name for this episode. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll, so we'll wrap this right. up. Signing off, this is your boy, Leo Cali, the true dank good boy. Uh, I'm not even going to say anything. <laughs> I just won fantasy championships. So that's all you need to know. Uh, not with the roster you have this year. Damn. Jay Jahi. That's all I'm saying. Oh. Oh, okay, we can compare that to my Melvin Gordon, Zeke Elliott team. After this week. We'll after talk after this week. this week. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. All right. All right. We'll catch you all on the flippity, floppity, bippity, boppity, boo. True. Peace.